What's up everyone? Welcome to a brand new ranking. Today I'm discussing the Mission Impossible franchise. Mission Impossible Fallout does come out this weekend. I love this film. You can check out my review down below in the bio. What I want to talk about today is the Mission Impossible franchise. I want to be ranking them from worst to best. And of course, on my channel, if you guys are new here, I love doing these rankings. I love discussing. I love rewatching these films, going back, and just figuring out a ranking list. And since this is the sixth film, we're going to be going through one through six, but I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. So leave down your comments what would your ranking be after seeing Fallout. And if you haven't seen Fallout yet, leave your ranking down right now. Then also tell me, of course, come back when you see Fallout and let me know how you would update your ranking. Without further ado, let's get to my worst. Coming down at number six is going to be Mission Impossible 2. Now, I've, I, I think this is probably everyone's weakest film. Mission Impossible 2 just feels like a John Woo film. This film doesn't hold up. Yes, it has some good stylized action, especially towards the back of the film. And yeah, Tom Cruise is great. They did some good character development with him that I think we did need. It didn't go and wanted it to, but it still got it there. E. Newton's in here and Anthony Hopkins, and I thought they both did a decent job. The villain in here is actually not too bad. He's more memorable than freaking fours, but again, there's some good things to this film. It's not utter trash, but there are a lot of bad elements to where this film does not hold up for me. I think some of the action sequences are way too stylized, way too sl much slow-mo, but what this film did was it did open up the world to say, hey, this film franchise is going to be a lot about stunts. The stunt thing with the whole knife getting really close to uh, Tom Cruise's eye is still insane today. He could have died. I mean, he does tons of stunts that can make him die, but this is one of them. That's where I kind of just go to Mission Impossible 2. It's not memorable. It's kind of just boring. You put it on the background when you're kind of just doing other things. And you're like, oh yeah, this scene. Oh yeah, that scene. Then the movie ends and you move on to Mission Impossible 3. Brings me to number five on my Mission Impossible ranking, and that is Mission Impossible, the first one. Now, I really liked Mission Impossible. It still holds up for me. I think some of the gadgetry and the technology stuff don't work, and some of the story is a little too convoluted with some of the storylines and plot lines. Never really mixing mashing but there are some brilliant sequences in here i love how this film portrays tom cruise in the beginning where you don't know who's the main character of course nowadays when you watch it you're like yeah tom cruise is the main character but at the time of watching this film for the first time it's setting up it as a team and just the way the film opens up is so intense. You still have that fantastic sequence, which still makes me clench my fist, even though I know they're going to get out of it. When he's dropping down, no score, complete silence, and the knife hits the desk. Utter, total silence and just total intensity. The train sequence is very well, too, even though some of the CGI doesn't hold up in there. But overall, this film is very intense. I love the running sequence with him trying to escape from the restaurant when he meets with the agent. He's going about, and he's looking around the room, and then the water breaks. I think, really, the direction from here from De Palma was fantastic and one of the best directions in the whole series alone. Come to my number four, and my number four happens to be Ghost Protocol. Now, some of this might be actually your guys' favorites, but Ghost Protocol for me never has been my favorite in this franchise and, that, and it's kind of weird to say that even though a lot of people think this is the one that redefined the Mission Impossible franchise I think a different one did do that but my thing with Ghost Protocol is Brad Bird did a great job directing this film it does have the weakest film in the franchise but the thing with this film is it doesn't give any more character development to Tom Cruise it just feels like hey we have Tom Cruise we have his awesome team and we're just going to put him in a new mission. And his, I mean, you get some more Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg's great. We, they backtracked Ving Rhames, which makes no sense because he's one of the best parts of the Mission Impossible franchise. But you bring in Jeremy Renner, who was supposed to take over this role, and now who knows if he's ever coming back to this franchise. But I actually liked Bran. I liked his new character. I liked the thing that they added to him, and I wanted a bit more of him in these films because I think he does do a good job. That's just because I'm a big Jeremy Renner fan, but that's kind of my thoughts on it. In Ghost Protocol, the main two things that do always stick out to me is the right sequence in the desert of course when he's just running i mean any tom cruise running sequence is great but this is probably one of the best in the whole franchise and that dubai scene when he's climbing the tower that's the scene everyone always remembers it's one of the most insane stunts they've ever done in this franchise and in pretty much any hollywood film in general but for me just ghost protocol as much as people can say that those scenes are memorable and they are memorable i remember them that's all I really remember from this film. Everything else kind of just seems to be a little bit forgettable. Brings me to what my number three will be. And my number three is going to be Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Now, Rogue Nation is directed by Christopher McCrary. And my problem with this film, and this is really my only issue because I, I love this film. It's a little slow at times, which kind of makes it a little bit boring. I, I think they didn't do, I think he didn't do a good job 
going from action scene to exposition, action scene to exposition, which a lot of these other films do do a little bit better. And I feel like that's the one thing that really needed to be corrected and tinkered with in this. The score is fantastic. I really like the score that they did in this film. And the direction was pretty solid too. I just feel like the script felt a little bit pacing and a little bit boggling and boring. But Becca Ferguson did join our team in this one and she is super herb in this she's one of the best parts of the mission impossible franchise now and i love seeing this and i can't wait to see where her character goes more and this film gave a little bit more background things to tom cruise's character which is what i love about this you get a little bit more benji in the field as well a little bit more ving rames too and yeah jeremy runner was a little bit more sidelined again but still like his character don't know where they're going with it again. For me, this just contains one of the best action sequences in the whole franchise. That whole opera scene is just so intense. The plane sequence is insane. And the motorcycle chase, come on now. Awesome. I'll even go to say Solomon Lane in here is a fantastic villain too. I think he's one of the best in here. Coming to my number two, that is Mission Impossible 3. For me, this is the film that redefined the franchise and made it what it is. J.J. Abrams comes from directing TV to make this film. And yeah, I guess you can... Yeah, he does too many face close-up shots because that's what TV's used to. But, and he's even addressed this if you watch interviews with him. But Mission Impossible 3 for me just feels like one of the most gritty films in the series. It changed what the film franchise was. It took the best elements of 1 and took the best elements of 2 and mashed them together. And it just made for a very intense and fantastic film. With probably the best villain in the franchise played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. Rest in peace to him. He was so good in here. There's so many memorable lines from him. All about trying to find this rabbit foot. And I mean, the whole sequence with him switching bodies, switching the face out, because I, I love when they do that. Just the IMF and how they switch out the mask is just always intriguing and fun. But this is one of my favorite sequences is when they uh, kidnap him in a sense. He Tom Cruise goes into his personality and it's just great. The bridge sequence is great. Everything, his relationship with Michelle Monaghan is fantastic it's always felt like a personal journey for tom cruise's character ethan hunt and i've always appreciated that so much we come to my number one which you guys probably know what it is it's mission impossible fallout i kind of spoiled this in my review that this might be my favorite film in the franchise and it is this film again did what mission impossible 3 did but even better it redefined this franchise once again turned it over and turned it into something new i will go as far as to say that this is probably one of the best action films of the decade I mean, Mad Max Fury Road, a lot of people were comparing it to that, and I didn't understand why until I saw the film. This movie has such an intriguing story that unravels in very ways that just keep me so hooked on, even though some of it can be a little bit convoluted and some of it can be a little bit convenient. It always kept me intrigued to hear each and every word because you really do have to hear each and every word to understand each and everything in this film. It contains it, wants you to watch it multiple times. The runtime doesn't even ever feels like two hours. And yes, there are some predictable elements to the story, but I still never knew where the movie was going to go. And it always kept me on the edge of my seat. It gives more character progression to Ethan Hunt's character. It gives great character progression to Rebecca Ferguson's character. It gives more to Benji. It gives more to Ving Rhames' character, Luther. And it just goes in that more solid line. And this is actually the first direct tie into any of the Mission Impossible franchise. This takes place right after Rogue Nation. So if you didn't see Rogue Nation, you gotta check out Four Fallout. And maybe you don't have to because my friend didn't see Rogue Nation. He still really liked Fallout. Fallout for me just has all the best action sequences in here. Everything's intense. The film, it, it starts with exposition, intriguing exposition, and then from there, it's just a nonstop thrill ride the whole way through. I'm trying to stay a little bit bland on the details in this since it is still a new film and I do not want to spoil it, but I absolutely loved Fallout. It's one of my favorite action films. I cannot wait to see this film over and over in the movie theaters. And this will probably be one of the first films I've seen this summer multiple times. My favorite Mission Impossible film to date. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching this ranking video. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. And of course, comment down below where we can talk about the Mission Impossible franchise. If you guys are also new here, hit up Sandwich on Films down below. Because right down in there, you guys can get into advanced movie screens. Brag to all your friends that you guys saw some films early. Check out some movie news. And of course, also some movie reviews written and video reviews like this. Guys, until next time, you guys all stay classy.